So I made a video yesterday about this little challenge where you basically make like a use countdown custom hook and react. And I got a lot of comments and I definitely appreciate all the solutions that I saw. I think it kind of expanded my thought process of how to solve those, some of these things. But I wanted to make one more video because I came back and I refactored some of my code. And I want to talk about some of the bad things that I did in this video. I will say that a lot of the times I record these videos, I just sit down and just start recording and typing stuff. So it's not like I had this pre-planned out. I just thought, okay, let's just build this custom hook and let's see if I can do it. Sometimes I implement pretty bad solutions and this is an example of a pretty bad solution. Now, the reason it's bad is right here, I had this custom render thing that I was doing. I've done this once before in like another video and someone pointed out that this is not the React way and I definitely agree. You should not be forcing React to render. So if you ever have like a counter and you're like just forcing it to increment or you have like a Boolean, you're just forcing it to flip from true to false just so your page will re-render. It's usually a telltale sign that you're just doing something wrong in React. So that's the first thing I did that it wasn't really the best. And the second thing I did is I have like this uh, two separate refs. One of them is keeping track of the time. So this is where I'm keeping track of the time and then I decrement that by one second every single time. And then finally later on, uh, like when I call reset, I think I go ahead and just like reset it back to the initial time in seconds. Um, and this code right here is pretty convoluted and hard to understand. I believe in my use effect near the bottom, if I can scroll down a little bit. I had a linter error. If you see how this is highlighted in yellow, it might be kind of hard to see. But there's actually a, uh, you know, there's a lint error saying that I'm not using my effect correctly, probably because this thing depends on start and I should be putting start here, which kind of means that start should be in like a use callback. So there's just a lot of stuff that I don't think was the most proper way to do it. And I wanted to kind of address that in a video again. Um, so let me just go ahead and run this Veet app real quick and go to my local host. So same idea, we have like a little countdown timer and when it hits zero, it pauses. It clears the interval and we can reset it back to five. So the exact same functionality, it's just done a little bit different in code. And I would say that this is a much cleaner way to do it, although it is a little bit more verbose. I will say that some of the things I did when, when implementing these solutions is I wanted to support React 18 strict mode. So let me show you real quick what that means. So in React 18 strict mode, if I were to go ahead and just print out a console log here, let me show you something. I'll just print out GG, or actually I'll print out like uh, game over. All right, so every time this thing increments, actually let me refresh the page. Every time it increments, it's gonna print out game over, but notice it actually calls game over twice because React strict mode is going to actually invoke this twice. So anything you put inside the state setter is actually invoked twice. And you have to keep that in mind when you're building out your custom hooks, because if you have any type of side effects inside of this, it can cause a lot of issues. So I didn't want to like do anything fancy with this uh, state setter callback. Um, and then also with React 18 strict mode, your effects are going to be fired, cleaned up, and then fired again. So keep that in mind every time you're building custom hooks or you're doing anything that's like related to strict mode. So with those things in the back of my mind, I wanted to verify that all this stuff works with this solution where basically I have a callback and the first time it is invoked, it prints out done. But then the second time it sets the callback reference to a new callback function like here, and it's going to print out GG. So let me show you that it's going to get down to zero. It prints out done, and then it's going to change the callback in state when I click reset. Well, actually right now it's already it's already changed in state and when i click reset it's going to do the countdown again and then it's going to print out gg so there were some things that i had in the back of my mind when i was building out that video in that last video which i wanted to make sure that my use countdown hook can account for like if the callback ever changes if the reference to the callback changes does the countdown work as expected but anyway that's enough talking let's just look at the code so same idea we have a function use countdown takes in an on done in an initial time and this thing only keeps track of the time left, okay? So when this component first loads, we put the initial time into a state variable and we are going to basically start decrementing that. And then we'll, we'll like decrement this later on. And then we also have an interval to keep track of the, uh, sorry, a reference to keep track of the interval. Um, now the important part is when this component first kind of mounts, 
I call a use effect and I call start. Okay, so remember with React 18 strict mode, it's going to call this method. It's then going to call this method and then it calls this method again. So everything you code needs to keep, you need to keep that in mind basically to make sure you're writing proper React effects. So that calls start, which happens to be a function that's wrapped in a use callback. Now, the reason we want to use a use callback is because it's going to recreate this function every single time, which in this instance may not be an issue, but if you don't do this, you're going to see some linting errors, which, I mean, you don't want linting errors, right? Actually, in fact, I'm not getting any linting errors anymore. So maybe my linter is not turned on. I might not even need to use that. But typically the, the properties that are passed into your function, you, you either need to have the person sending them in, wrap them in a use callback, so that your hooks don't fire over and over and over again. And I think this actually might be part of the issue. Yeah, so if I don't use the callback, notice that it basically just starts going negative. It said done, GG, everything just breaks. And like, I need to get a better linter because it probably would have warned me. Um, so that's why we needed a callback here. So that it doesn't keep on recreating um, this function which means that this effect is going to basically keep firing off over and over again. Uh, React's confusing sometimes, I'll be honest with you all. I feel like a noob all the time when I'm dealing with React. I want to switch over to Svelte or something, but at this point, React pays my bills, so I'm trying to learn it better. So when we call the start function, all we do is we create an interval, which fires off every second, and then we decrement this integer by one every time. So just keep on decrementing it by one. And one thing that's better about this code than the last code is that I have a, an effect that's listening for time left, all right? Before I had like all this logic that was like shoved into one function, which was kind of too much. Like you try to follow the single responsibilities principle and keep your code very modular. You don't want to do too much in like one place. But really, if you think about this, we just need to listen for when time left hits zero. And that makes sense to have that be its own use effect. Just listen for time left. And when it hits zero, which I'm doing here, we clear the interval. We reset the ref to null and then we call undone which is then going to call the function that we passed in here which is all this weird janky stuff i'm doing but i already explained why i'm doing that and of course you need to pass undone here because if you don't it's not proper like this thing is referencing some property that could be changing every single time this component re-renders and you want to make sure that this effect has the latest value like if i don't put the on done here actually let me show you what happens i believe it's not going to print out gg after this thing goes to a five all right so i'll reset it and i believe this thing will still say done even after it goes down to zero actually it says gg so i don't even know <laughs> i would think that this thing would have to be passed in um but i guess every time this thing re-renders it's just checking this up here but if my linter is working, it would have said I should put this here. In fact, I don't know why my ESLint is not even on right now, but that's another, that's another thing to a, but anyways, let's not worry about that. And then down here, I mean, I already talked about this effect. We just start the interval. And then when the component unmounts, we clear the interval, super straightforward. And then down here, we are going to return the time left. So this is our state number that just slowly decrements by one. And then we also expose a reset function, which, I mean, you could pull this out to another like function here if you wanted to, if you consider that a little bit cleaner, like so. And basically that allows the parent component to call a reset function whenever they want, which is going to basically set the time left back to the initial time. Remember this thing is gonna be set to whatever you pass in, which will be like five. So I'm going to call reset. I set the time left equal to five. I clear the interval if there one's running because you can reset it when it's counting down. I want to clear the interval, make a new one. All right. I mean, technically, I don't think we even need to clear the interval, but that's just like, you know, clear the interval. It's already running. And then like, we'll set the time to five and then we'll I'll start again, which again, we should go up here and that will call this use callbacks hashed version of this callback function. Create an interval, start decrementing, and do the whole process over and over again. So, I don't know if I explained that well, but this is a little bit easier to understand, in my opinion, although it is more, you know, lines of code. It's more proper because in the video I did yesterday, 
I was doing some hacky approach for like forcing React to re-render, which you should never do, honestly. Like if you're finding a way to like force React to re-render, you probably have solved the problem incorrectly. And then also I had like a ref that was storing a number, which that seems kind of hacky too. So I don't know why I even did that. So that's about all I wanted to do. I just wanted to walk you through this code and show you a different approach to the same problem. And one piece of advice I would give you is after you solve a problem, like it's always good to just think about, is there a better way to do this? Can you refactor the code and make it cleaner? Can you make it more performant? Can you make it easier to read and understand? Um, Honestly, looking at React code, I'm always confused looking at this stuff. It just seems so confusing. But maybe it's just because I'm not a functional programmer at heart. So this stuff is just looks like an alien language sometimes, depending if it's too late in the day. But if you enjoyed watching me kind of explain my refactored approach to this problem, uh, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And also feel free to join my Discord if you want to be part of a community of other developers learning how to code and you have any questions that you want to get answered with dealing with Node or JavaScript or React. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.